President Muhammad Buhari has erected ministers, permanent secretaries, and heads of all government parastatals to implement policies that will better the livelihood of Nigerians. The president gave the directive at the presidential villa in Abuja while closing a two-day retreat organized by the office of the secretary to the government of the federation to assess the performance of government in the last one year. He said his administration cannot afford to fail Nigerians who invested their trust in the government. President Buhari noted with satisfaction that the administration under his leadership has learned lessons in the last one year that will further enhance performance. And to take a look at this is Tikpo Olayoku, journalist and public affairs analyst, as well as Femi Lawson, public affairs analyst. Thanks sir, to you both for joining us. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Aneta. Good morning. Good morning. Now, the president was Good unequivocal. Morning. Good morning. The president was unequivocal in his directive during the ministerial review that some activists peddle falsehood and that it's time for his cabinet and aides to blow your trumpet. What's your reaction to this, uh, starting with you, Mr. Lawson? Well, I think uh, it is good that every government, you know, have every right to blow its own trumpet to let the world know what it is doing. But I think the best way to always achieve that is by, you know, the virtue of what the citizens say about their own government. I think it should have been better if the administration had wanted to be judged, you know, or to be analyzed on the basis of what is physically available, visible, you know, for Nigeria and even the international community to see as the achievements of this administration. It is not enough for the government, for the president to charge his ministers and appointees to embark on what may, I want to describe as unnecessary propaganda drive, even though, even when there is, you know, fundamental absence of, you know, you know of clear achievements that can be attributed you know, to the government. The truth is that, of course, you can give it to the administration. It has taken some steps as far as, you know, improving of infrastructure, you know, is concerned. But I think there are fundamental issues that have to do with, you know, the day-to-day -day realities in Nigeria when you talk about the economy, we're talking about you know, security, we're talking about the anti-corruption, which are the tripod of you know what the president came of, of, of you know campaign upon in 2016. Nothing visible has been achieved so far, as far as this is concerned. But I think charging, you know, appointees to begin to you know trumpet these so-called achievements clearly shows that Nigerians have not been seen in all as far as the achievement of the association is concerned. Mm -hmm. If the achievements have been visible enough, the president may not have had any reason to charge, you know, his appointees to begin to trumpet, you know, his achievement. It should have been visible to us as Nigerians and even to the international community. How about you, Mr. Alayokun? What's your thoughts uh, on this? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Anita. Good morning, viewers. Um, if you look at the fundamentals of the government, the information department is always a very important aspect of the government. Uh, as a matter of fact, there is this debate whether journalists should be made the spokespersons of the administration or government or president or what some people call them uh, people in the populations department which is the wider gamut of the that profession uh, as a matter of fact it has been a very hot debate since the advent of this administration a lot of people believe that members of the president's media team are not doing enough to actually propagate what the, the government has been doing. It has always been there. It's always a very big debate. 
And uh, you see, when you are talking of achievements of a government, they can be uh, classified into two categories. We have the tangible and then the intangible. The tangible is the one that can be physically immediately seen, felt, and then the intangible are things that people do not ordinarily see. Ordinarily see. And then also under this tangible, we have things that are still incubating or from there that are still growing, developing before it can be feasible for everybody to see. As a matter of fact, in terms of infrastructure, except you have the real cost or reason to travel all over the country, that is when you'll be able to know what exactly the president is talking about in terms of infrastructure. As a, again, in terms of the tangible, okay, let, let us take the issue of agri, agri as an example. Under the agriculture, we have the anchor borrower scheme, which all those who have benefited directly have said that it is a very important project. But interestingly, unless you are in that profession, unless that you are in that field, you might not know what those guys are talking about. There are other programs that the government has has introduced. You have the NPower. Those who have benefited will tell you we have benefited. But a lot of Nigerians don't know about these things. They were talking about infrastructure. A lot of people have come to see, those who have traveled of recent, especially going to the east, will tell you that the, the what they call it, the second Niger bridge is becoming a reality because people are beginning to see. But how many people go towards that direction? If the government do not, does not tell you we are doing it, a lot of people might not know. So I just like, uh, again, like Mr. Lawson said, there are some aspects of achievement of the government that will be felt directly by the people. That is the one people can say, oh, okay, we are feeling in terms of economy. How is the economy hitting you in terms of the issue of security? How is the issue of security hitting you? And interestingly, the issue of security is also another thing. I, I, before the lockdown, I had the privilege of going to some parts of the North. And some people in the North, have, some of them have said that for five years, they could not be relocated. They could not go back to their uh, ancestral homes. That is those who are living in IDPs. Many of them, some of them have gone back to their ancestral homes and they are beginning to live their normal life. There are, was, there are some communities in the north that for five, six, seven years, they could not even hold what they call uh, prayers. It's Eid, Eid prayers when Muslims are celebrating. Some communities are beginning to celebrate it. So it will be difficult for you to convince those guys that the government is not working. Hmm. Maybe these are the things the government, the president is saying, okay, some of these things are happening in some parts of the country. If it is not visible to everybody, perhaps individual government officials, government spokesperson should begin to say this. Maybe that is when it will sink. Hmm. But above all, there are areas that people should be able to feel directly, in the area of economy especially. And I think that should be an area where the president should focus on. How do we make our policies to be friendly, to be people friendly, so that people can feel it without anybody telling them? But some people are feeling it, like what I mentioned, the empower. You don't need any minister to tell you those who have benefited. The Anchor program, you don't need anybody to tell you before you can tell anybody. How many people know about it? I think that is the contention. Mm. Um, going back to you now, Mr. Lawson, do you consider uh, the president's uh, statement as an invitation to resist criticism or a response to criticism? Can you hear me, Mr. Lawson? Unfortunately, we, we can't hear you. We can't hear you at the moment. If you can't hear me, uh, we'll get back to you when your audio is a lot better. But going back to you now, uh, our, our very own journalist, uh, what do you think about this? Do you think this is uh, an invitation to resist criticism, respond to it? But the president didn't say you guys should not criticize. Okay. Hello. We can hear you. Please but go ahead. But the president did not say you guys should not criticize. He said, my government, my government officials should begin to respond. Hello? We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. okay. What, what the government, what the, the president is not even concerned about what is happening outside. He is only talking to his officials, the people he has appointed. And especially, I think the box now starts on the desk of the media personnel of the government. Of the government. I'm talking of the senior assistant uh, to the president of media. I'm talking of the SSA to the president. On publicity. I'm also talking of the Ministry of Information. 
And I'm still talking about the NOA, who seems to have gone to sleep in the past few years. Nobody seems to be hearing everything, anything about from the NOA, especially during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown and stuff like that. Nobody had anything. I think this is exactly what the president is talking about. It's just like telling my media team, apart from the ministers, because of, especially when you're talking about government programs and how do you publicize it, the box stops on the, on the table of the media team, like Permadational, like Garuba, the Minister for Information, that's uh, Alaji Lai Mohammed, the NOA people. They need to be doing more. Interestingly, they also the ministers of the various departments. For example, look at the issue of uh, works and housing. That's where our children of the Mashallah comes in. The issue of, uh, we are talking about the Second Niger Bridge, we are talking about some roads in the north, in some roads in all parts of the country. So I think it has to do with the ministers, the government officials, not people criticizing outside. I think what the president is trying to say is that the, the criticism from outside seems to have taken the sale of what the government has been able to achieve because he believed that his ministers, his aides are not doing enough in terms of telling people what well, we think, are doing. Uh, and the, uh, what I agree with you that it's an attempt to, yeah, I can hear you. I said that. All right, we'll go on a short break right now while we resolve the audio issues and we'll be right back. Do you stay with us on The Breakfast? And you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And just before we went on that break, we're speaking uh, with two guests on the statement by the presidency uh, speaking about media aides blowing their trumpets in office. So going back to you now, Mr. Lawson, do you agree with the president's statement that information should be uh, better repackaged? Well, I think the president did not only expect is appointing to repackage their approach to information dissemination. I also want to say that there was an attempt by the president to stop, you know, critics from assessing the performance of his government. And I, that to me is not democratic enough. Every democratic administration must be assessed on the basis of its performance, must be criticized, and it is a major, you know, ingredient of democracy. You cannot call, you know, People, you know, irresponsible activists, you know, call them uh, blind critics and all sort of description just because you think they are questioning the performances of your government. I think it is not enough for the president to expect that there should not be an assessment of his performance. And like I said earlier, the job, the work, the achievement of the government should be what should be speaking for it not the propaganda of its appointees. Today, you and I know there are administrations in this country at various states, even at some local level, that their jobs can fundamentally speak for them. We have witnessed you know, some states in this country where their governors became celebrated, not because they had you know, the finest of media aid or propaganda tools, but because of their performances where in this country when, you know, Mr. Peter was governor of Anambra, we were here, you know, when uh, Mr. Babasude Raji Pashala was governor of Lagos State, some of these people had brilliant performances to the extent that their propaganda machineries were the citizens. That is when the average Lagosian, you know, speak daily wherever they find themselves about the transformation that, you know, was going on under the administration of Mr. Babasude Raji Pashala. What Mr. Peter B was doing in, you know, in our member state, what Dan Kwambo was doing in Gumbi. It was not on the basis of the propaganda machinery or, or, or the trumpet blew by those administrations. That is why I insist that the work of the administration should speak for it, not, you know, enough to charge, you know, your media aides and appointees to begin to blow trumpets. Do you want to blow trumpets and tell Nigerians what do not, what does not exist? We have seen in the past where government appointees come to you know, the public to tell lies about the achievement of government, to tell citizens what are, you know, things are not actually happening. So we think that should not be encouraged. Rather, the president should call you know, an, his uh, appointees and charge them to improve on their performances. He should charge the various ministries to improve on their performances. And he himself must sit up and take leadership. That's enough. That alone is enough to you know, show Nigerians the achievement of the administration. Not necessarily the number of 
the media releases of propaganda that the appointees of the government are able to churn out. All right. So, Mr. Lawson, you're saying uh, to the presidency, let your work speak for you. And uh, Mr. Olayoku is saying uh, that is not... Okay, and Mr. Olayoku is saying not everybody has the privilege of visiting every part of Lagos or every part of Nigeria to know exactly uh, the developmental uh, improvement in those areas. So um, going back to you now, Mr. Olayoku, do you agree with the president's statements that information should be better repackaged? And uh, what do you think he meant by that? Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, at the beginning of this program. Okay, at the beginning of this program, I told you about the ongoing debate about uh, who should actually man the media uh, department of a government. A lot of people have accused the current uh, media aid of the president of not doing enough. It's always in the papers. If they have not noticed any lacuna, there won't have been any call for the uh, media a team of the president to be rigid. And there is the need for us to also examine the speech of the of Mr. President. Where did he make the speech? It was at a retreat for the ministers to compare notes, to look at the last one year, what have we been able to achieve? And after everything said and done, all said and done, the president must have noticed that if you guys have done all these things, and then some people are out there criticizing us for not doing anything. That means we are not doing enough in telling people what we have done. If you, you need to read this president's speech because you li I listened to him. Uh, like some people said, that is what the first time the president will speak extempore for as long as close to 30 minutes. And there was never a place where the president said, go and blow our propaganda. What Mr. President said is go and tell Nigerians what we have done, what we have done and what we are doing. I, I, I don't know. We are talking of Nigeria, of about 36 states. And we are making reference to Lagos states of just a very small size of a particular state, where it is very possible to see what people are doing. And even during the Fashola era, maybe there is a need for us to appreciate the media team of Mr. Fashola, because they did a very fantastic job. You see, it, 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 the, the issue of a media job of a government we can be likened to what uh, is said in the, in, in the gospel, that can you light a candle and put it under the table? Nobody will see. So what the media people do is to bring the media, uh, candle from under the table and put it on the table so that people can see, because when it illuminates around. If oh. Mr. Shola have done all, has done all those, did all those things he did, and he didn't have a very fantastic media team, no, not many people will know about it. Because some of these things you do, you use the media. I mean, you are looking at the electronic media, you are talking of the print media. It depends on how effective you deploy these assets. And it depends on the rapport that the government has with the media. So there, I don't want us to go into the relationship between the media and the current government. But the point is, you see, when you are talking of repackaging your media strategy, it involves a lot of things. Apart from just talking to people, it depends on how you're able to tell the people. You know, the president said something which I think we shouldn't lose sight of. That in view or even despite dwindling resources, that is one aspect we need to understand. And that was why the president told you that before he came into office, we have quit all production of our 2.5 million barrels a day, selling at over $100 a day. This is what they were able to achieve. But unfortunately, as fate will have it, by the time we came in, because of the activities of uh, the Delta guys, the production shrank to about $500,000 a day. And unfortunately, at the international market, the prices went down at $37, billion, $37 per barrel. That is what, that's what they didn't say, go and go to propaganda. Tell Nigerians that in view of this, despite the fact that this is what we had at our disposal, this is what we have been able to achieve. Mm. Whether we want to like it, we want to say it or not, the real project is ongoing and is, is something that everybody should be. But how many people know about it? How many people know about the real project between Lagos and Lebanon? How many people that it is operational? How many people know about the real project that is going on in other parts of the country? That's what the president is saying. Not go and tell lies. When they come out and tell lies, people will know. The president said the economy, the, the finances, have, uh, sorry, the, what we have at our disposal to do all this. 
It's what we should present to people. Why some people, when they have this, what did they do? So I read the speech. I listened to the president. The president never told them to go and blow the trumpet of propaganda. He said, go and tell them what we have been able to achieve with these mega resources. Mm. And I don't see that as telling people not to criticize us. He didn't say don't criticize. He said, we have listened to them. But you guys, if you have told me these things you have done, and I've seen this, because the president receives reports every day on so many fronts. But people are talking, uh, because you see, when you're talking about people, you're talking about people like you and I, that have access to television, that we can come and blow grammar in the morning, that have access to the uh, print guys that can blow grammar in the morning. But what about the, somebody that is feeling it? I told you of the Empower project. Some people are collecting money before it was suspended some few months back because of some fraud applied to it. Will you now tell that person that the government has not done anything? Or the Anchor Borough Program? Or other issues that are at stake? I told you of a place in the north. They said for six years. They have not gone back to their ancestral home. They are back to their homes now. Can you now tell the people that they are, the government is not working? So that is what the president is saying. Not go and All tell right. us. All right. Go and tell them what they are able to achieve with these bigger resources. I don't think there's anything bad in it. The question is, if we don't have need for all this, why then do we have Ministry of Information? Why do we have media aid to governors and the president? Why do we have National Orientation Agency? Why do we have a department and Ministry of Information that comes on radio and television every day to tell you what government is doing? If, then, if we say there's no need, why are they doing it? Every state in Nigeria have a program they put on other channel, other television stations to showcase what they are doing. Then what, do we say, well, if they are not doing it, why then are they doing it? So that is just it. President, this is don't criticize us. Criticize us, but my boys, my people, go and tell the people what we are doing with the mega resources at our disposal. All right, Ms. Halariko, thanks for that. So, Ms. Larson, yesterday we had the Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Gaba Shehu, on Plus Politics, uh, where he explained that the president was referring not only to the presidency media team, but also ministries and agencies. So do you think these spokespersons are doing enough? Well, uh, I want to disagree a bit too with, uh, you know, my, with uh, the co-guest on uh, the basis of uh, the administration probably not, possibly not having an efficient media machinery. The truth is that this current administration as you know, very top notch you know, media aid, when you think about the senior social assistant, the president of publicity, the special advisor on media and publicity, the minister of information, these are top rated, you know, well experienced, you know, people in the public relations and media, you know, line. But the truth is that there have, been, there have not been much of an achievement as far as Nigerians are concerned. You know, for them to report or to speak about possibly necessitating the charge by the president, the truth is this. I insist that it is not enough, you know, for the government to tell the people what it has been able to do. It is always better and more credible for the people themselves, you know, to speak about the achievement of government. Mind you, when you are talking about, you know, how governments you know, have been able to resettle, relocate some communities back you know, to their ancestral home. Are we talking about the number of communities that have been the same, within the same period, lost access to their ancestral homes? Are we talking about the rate that, at which institutions are actions between the same period that you think of? I, see, the negatives have become so dominant that it has over, you know, shadowed some fundamental you know, gains that the administration has made. If the trains are available today, and you know the average Nigerian can you know, you know shuttle through the train, the average Nigerian will take advantage of it, just like we did when Abuja Kaduna started until it practically became hijacked. You know, now by the same people who had you know the opportunities and privileges. So I think what the government should focus on is how to improve on its performance, which should be judged by Nigerians, and we should be visible enough, even to the blind Nigerians, not necessarily on the basis of how far, you know, the, 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 the administration's appointees can go. Nigerians are not blind, and of course, not all of us are also there. These things should speak, the world should speak for themselves, not necessarily on the, you know, media aid as purposely commissioned, you know, to begin to, uh, most of have seen in the past where, you know, 
government appointees are come to show false images of projects that are not of the government. We've seen people importing pictures, you know, from overseas, you know, displaying such as you know, project of the government. So we, Nigerians will not want a repeat of that. Let Nigerians see the work. Let the work speak for themselves. Hmm. All right. So um, going back to you now, Mr. Aloiko, do you think uh, the presidency, the spokespersons, are leveraging the media enough? <laughs> Mr. Aloiko, are you there? So. And that is, yes, I, I don't think so. And that is why those who, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, yeah. I, I don't think so. That is why if you listen to comments of people who have uh, done this role before, I mean, as well, Ms. Media spokesperson to past president, they, they believe that uh, the approach of the current media team is too timid. Let me give you an instance. During the Dr. Joseph, uh, Dr. Jonathan era, when Dr. Abati was the spokesperson. A lot of people in government then believed that the, the approach of Dr. Abati was so timid. And that was why they brought somebody in the mold of Dr. Donyu Okupe, who was combative and aggressive, to tell them that is, you know, that, that, that is just to let you know the approaches that you can push when you are looking at the issue of uh, achievements of government. So if they are telling the media team of the government to change their approach, it is not because we don't have top-notch individuals. Interestingly, the two people that are the helm of the media team of the president, that uh, Mr. Fen Adishino and uh, Mr. Ashew Gariba, are notable journalists that have reached the peak of their profession. Mr. Adishino left uh, the, point, uh, sorry, uh, the son to come and take up this job as a very top brass, and he had also occupied the position of the president of the Guild of Editors, just like uh, Mr. Shewul Garuba. They are top notch. They have what it takes. But you see, when you are in the stormy waters of politics, where when you, your, your opponent will tell you that that thing you are seeing as a bridge is not a bridge, but a mirage, then you can know that you need to change your approach. You see, at times this thing could be feasible, but politicians will tell you that that thing you are looking, because it's from the opponent, he will tell you that thing you are looking at is a mirage. Go there and touch it, you will not see it. That is the approach they, will, they say they should change. It, it, nobody is saying this government is perfect. Nobody is saying this government is 100%. But what you have to take it against the backdrop of what the president said. The president is, was saying that in view of what we had at our disposal, if we are the mood to achieve this, and people outside, are, those people who are saying we are not done anything, are, seem, to, seem to be getting the upper ground. It's like you guys need to change your approach. Not only the media team, even the ministers, what they are doing. You know, there used to be a time when we have something like a usual uh, media briefing uh, by the president. We had it very well under the, the, the Revolution Commerce uh, Center. We had a little of it under uh, what you call it, uh, Lietia Radua, and a little of it under Jonathan too. But you know, unfortunately, or interestingly, the current president is an introvert by nature. He is not, if you have been watching his activities from when he was the military head of state, it was the company command that was doing much of the talking. That's the person of uh, uh, late, um, um, the, this man from uh, the chief of staff then, I, I forgot his, his name. He was the one doing the talking, much of the talking. And that is his nature. So he, I think what he needs to do, like you have said, individual ministries, ministers, agencies, whatever you are doing with the virtual Busa, you can say, that does not mean that there are some things that are not visible. Because there are some people that have traveled to the south in the Padre, ah, it is true we have seen it. The bridge is now above water level. If you go to other parts of the country where they are doing roads. So that is exactly what the president is saying. Yes, the work should speak for him, but at the same time, there is a need for you to tell people what you are doing. I don't think there's any crime in people president saying, go and tell Nigeria what we are doing. The president never said, go and tell Nigerian lies. He didn't say go and spread propaganda. That's the need for us to dissect this speech. Now, let us wait for this media aids. Let us wait for the ministers. Go and tell us lies. If somebody tells us he has been the skyscraper from that he is going to touch heaven in Nabekuta, we will go there and see if it is not there. That is when you can see they are, they are telling lies. All right, Mr. Olayo. what they are going to say. Because the president never told them to go and propaganda. He said go and tell Nigerians what we are doing.
Okay. Um, Mr. Lawson, let's come back to the media managers of the president. Uh, recently, we see many disparaging them as robots uh, who are not allowed to use their initiative until instructed. And uh, an example of this is a case of Professor Ibrahim Gambari, uh, where, you know, they could not confirm, uh, you know, his appointment until he was sworn in. So what, what's your reaction to this? Well, it only exposes the fact that you know there is not the synergy between the works you know of those that have been appointed to manage the image of the administration, and not only in the case of the appointment of the chief of staff, like you just you know made an example. Now there have been so many instances where you hear conflicting you know conflicting statements from spokespersons of this government. There have been so many instances where you know you have reports from a special advisor to the president of media and the senior special assistant who come out and say another thing, it actually shows that, you know, there has not been clear-cut leadership as far as, you know, information dissemination is concerned. And I don't often blame these people. The truth is that most times, Nigerians expect the president himself to take charge of communicating, you know, to the, to the, to the citizens. We've seen presidents, you know, of countries even in Africa, don't let us go to the United States. In Africa, you know, having regular interaction, interface with their citizens through the media. But what we have here, I don't want to agree with Mr. Olai so that uh, our president is an introvert. No, president, you know, the quality of leadership does not give any excuse for some, you know, personal, negative personal attributes that may be used as a justification for non-performing, non-performance. The truth is that the president owes Nigeria, you know, that, you know, opportunity of talking to them and, you know, using the instrumentality of the media. Today, we have only had one interaction, you know, with the president as far as the presidential media chat is concerned. For five years, the president Buhari has the president of this country. What is this telling us? That, you know, we can have, you know, all sort of aid coming to say all sort of things in the name of the president. But if we have a president who speaks directly to the media, who has media interactions, who organize, you know, who sits around the table with, 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 the, with the journalists, you know, to speak to Nigerians, to receive questions from Nigerians, has such interactions, that would have been, you know, little or no room for such misrepresentation, you know, of issues or such confusion, like we often wait under the Buhari presidency. The truth is that there has been no coordination because the leadership itself is not living up to expectation as far as far as communicating with Nigeria is concerned. I don't want to take any excuse, and I don't think there's any justification for the president to have continued, you know, to evade the opportunity of speaking and having live interaction with Nigeria through a media chat. Right. Like we have often had. Not only in Nigeria, you know, it's a global practice for president to speak to citizens using the instrumentality of the media. But here, yeah, we keep giving excuses that president is an introvert. We didn't elect a president to come and be an introvert or to sit in the comfort of, you know, his office or room. All right, Mr. Lawson. We the president to have constant engagement with Nigeria to speak to Nigeria and to listen to Nigeria. And that's why Nigeria mm -hmm. to let them press the worry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawson. So Unfortunately, one, this is where we have, have to draw the curtains. One is a permanent issue who come and continuously, you know, speak to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Lawson, but this is where we have to draw the curtains on the conversation this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, Dipo Olayoku and Mr. Femi Lawson for joining the conversation this morning. Thank uh -huh.